how's it going everybody welcome to my garage um, I've got my Anycubic Viper out here I accidentally broke my bed mounts the other day transporting the machine so I had to make new bed mounts for the rails and I just installed those on here so I figured since I'm out here and I've got the camera and everything I might as well do a rundown on this machine because I, I haven't done a long form video on it. And yeah, so if you've got an Anycubic Viper and you want to kind of keep it relevant without doing a whole like switch wire or really in depth type of conversion on your machine, this is kind of a, a pretty simple way to go about doing it. So here's the breakdown of the machine. I installed linear rails on the y-axis, completely unnecessary in my experience, uh, but I did it anyways and I don't know where the hardware is, so if I wanted to go back to the v-slot wheels, can't really do that. So yeah, we got linear rails on here. We have clipperized this machine. Um, I'm running a Big Tree Tech Pi for my main MCU. And then I have the EBB36 toolhead board up here for the toolhead MCU. We're running on CAN bus. There is a little mini CAN bus board that mounts mounts onto the Big Tree Tech board, so it's all it's all in one. I really like that. Uh, the Pi also has power terminals in the back, so you can run it off of 24 volts. So my power supply is powering the Pi, and then I also have that power coming into our CAN bus cable here to power the tool head. What's really cool about that is if I want to take the tool head off, I just have to unplug this wire, and then I've got four hex cap screws on the side here. I'll take it off. All right, so here is our tool head. Um, I have, I think it's the TZ2.0 um, hot end on here. I really like this thing. I've ran several tool heads or tool hot ends on this machine. This is the one that I like the most and I'm stuck with that is not absurdly expensive. Um, <clears throat> this is the Hero Me Gen 7. Everything is, you know, straight out of the Gen 7 pack except for the inductive probe mount. I made this in Tinkercad, it's really simple. If anyone's interested in it, I, get, I could print, put it on printables. I just have never done that before. I don't know how to do that, so I could figure it out, I guess. I found that the, you know, the strain gauge probe, it seemed like I was getting like, it looked like Z wobble or something on my prints with clipper speeds going really fast. And, it, with that strain gauge, you could wiggle the hot end. So now I can print a lot faster without having those defects, which I mean is cool. And then I can also just beep, take it all off at once. So that's pretty cool. But everything here is available on printables. Everything except for you know this guy, which I could put on there. But I don't really know if anyone's going to be interested in modding an old viper like this. I don't know if there's anything else to say about this. The EBB36 is pretty cool, pretty easy to set up. Um, it took me about a week end to get everything up and running, and I've never done it before, so, you know, great tool to learn on. Uh, the reason why I went with this back one, as you can see here, is I modified the gantry adapter and put a little mount here for the inductive probe, but I couldn't probe the whole bed with this mount so behind the nozzle works all right i i haven't had any issues with it i am going to have to get in here and mess with my clipper config for screw tilt adjust because i had a really nice bed mesh it was all nice and leveled because i did the silicone bed mount thing on it and i you know just ruined that by breaking my bed mount so anywho i'm not sure what else to talk about? Let me get this mounted back in. We're installed. What I really like about this, just the Viper in general, 
Not that I would recommend anyone go out and buy one now because there are so many better printers out there. But when I bought this thing, it was, you know, recently released. It was a pretty new printer for what it was out of the box. Somebody who was new to 3D printing, this machine was pretty much a dream. I mean, you didn't have to mess with leveling. Um, it was pretty much start up and go. And that's what I, I didn't know if I was going to be into 3D printing. I wanted to actually 3D print and not tinker. But anybody who starts 3D printing, you soon learn that you probably enjoy tinkering more than you do printing in some cases. So this machine was like the gateway for it. It's been pretty easy to work on, to modify, and I don't want to just throw it out. I mean, I have some really nice machines. I have the SV06 Plus, which, you know, it, it's a pretty good machine. And the SV08 from Sovol is my main printer, and that thing is a beast. But this guy holds its own. Um, with these modifications, I get really good speeds out of it for it being an old bed slinger and it produces really nice quality. The EBB36 brings a lot of features in, um, you know, convenience, being able to remove the head and everything. Uh, you get a lot of hot end options with the Hero Me system on here. And then having your input shaper built into the tool head, it just makes it easier. I have like a piss board that I could mount on here but it being built in, it's really easy to just calibrate the x-axis and then, you know, print a little mount and then slap a, my piss board on here and do input shaping that way. But I've been really happy with it. Um, I will, you know, show some videos of it printing time lapse and I'm going to get inside and put this back together and get in my printer config and redo my bed mesh. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.